so the question is did I have it I don't know uh, it's possible Well, good morning everybody out there on the interweb. This is Cruise Man. Just getting ready to take a little Sunday morning ride over to my uh, one of my grocery stores. Happy Mother's Day to all of you out there who either are a mother or have a mother, I guess. I guess everybody's got one, don't they? Hopefully still alive. But happy Mother's Day. In fact, I'm on my way to go pick up a Mother's Day cake and some flowers. So what better time to do a little motor vlog and just catch everybody up on everything. I'm going to pull over here for a second. I have got a little cramp in my hip. I don't know if you guys ever get these cramps. Sometimes I get a little, just right on the end and the tip of my hip. And I have to kind of stretch a little bit. I think I'm okay now. You know, as you get older, pain is just something you have to kind of deal with, isn't it? Um, I don't think they prepared me for this. You know, it's like the old saying goes, if I'd known I was going to live this long, I'd have taken better care of myself. But if this is your first time watching my motor vlogs, uh, welcome to Cruise Man's Garage channel. And I'd appreciate it if you click that little subscribe button down below and click on that little bell icon if you want YouTube to notify you of my other videos. Just so much good stuff happening right now. We're first of all, it's just a beautiful Sunday morning. About 67 degrees here in uh, Dallas Fort Worth. No almost no wind. Just a perfect morning. We've had some great weather this spring. And we'll have our days of rain, and some days it gets up in the 90s, and some days it, it gets down as low as 50, but overall we've really had some pretty decent riding weather. I hope to be taking the bike out to West Texas later this week to visit my brother. We'll see if that comes to pass. Um, my initial plan was to leave on Tuesday, but that got delayed because, as some of you may have seen on my Facebook page, I took the bike out of the garage uh, this couple days ago to take some pictures. And when I, when I got ready to wheel the bike back in, I noticed a screw in the front tire. Oh my gosh, and these tires only have about 6,000 miles on them. I was hoping to get about another four or 5,000 miles out of these tires. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll use this opportunity to... Uh, I went ahead and ordered a new set of tires, a new set of Bridgestones. And I thought, well, I'll use this opportunity to do a video to show how to plug a tire using a rope plug because that's what I've always used in the past even though I've never plugged a front tire before I've never had a nail or a screw in a front tire before so I got all of my equipment and all of my uh, contact cement my rope plugs my reamer uh, all the tools I was going to use for this video got the camera all set up got the lights all set up and I go to take out the screw and uh, when it came out it was only uh, it was a tiny little screw it, and no air escaped when I removed the screw so that was good news so it, it never pierced the belt at all it only went in I'd say just under three-eighths of an inch I actually measured it and the head of the screw never actually penetrated the tread either so 
it was the smallest sheet metal screw you'd ever seen and uh, so I guess I was lucky and I'm actually riding on that tire right now because it never has it hasn't dropped one tenth of a pound of air since that happened but I will be replacing the tire uh, before I go to West Texas next week I don't feel comfortable uh, getting on a road trip long distance with extended periods of high speed on a you know what could be a questionable tire so you know I just figured why not err on the side of caution if it was a rear tire I would probably just go ahead and go with it in fact I might have gone ahead and plugged it and gone to West Texas but not with a front tire front tire is another story in fact I'm actually keeping my speed down today I'm on the uh, highway 121 I'm on my way to the grocery store and I'm not going to go over 50 52 miles an hour or something like that I'll just let everybody pass me because if this thing were to start losing air uh, that would not be good so some of you commented on Facebook and I appreciate your comments and your suggestions and as I've said in the past, I do pay attention to, uh, to the comments. Now, by the time you see this video, or this motor vlog, I should have my review of this seat that many of you have been asking about. This is a custom seat from Ultimate Seats. And I've been riding with this seat now for probably, well, I'd say close to a couple of months. And I've done one road trip when I went to Oklahoma using this seat, which was about a 560 mile round trip journey. So I have put a little bit of seat time in on this ultimate seat. But if you want to see all of the uh, details about the seat, how it's made, what my thoughts are, uh, if it's something that I recommend, you're going to have to watch my review video. So I'll put a link up here in this video, and I'll also put it at the end of the video and in the description down below. Now the topic of this video today is to deal with a lot of questions and comments I've had on both YouTube and Facebook about many of you know that when Ricky and I got home from our last cruise which was in February about the about the first part of February actually that we both came down with a flu or flu like symptoms Ricky actually got sick uh, probably the last day of the cruise. She wasn't feeling good, and when we flew home the next day, uh, she was coughing the whole time on the flight. Of course, this is before anybody really knew anything about COVID-19. Uh, I didn't have any symptoms at all. I felt fine. We got home. Um, on a Sunday morning, we got home on a Saturday. By Sunday morning, she was feeling pretty bad. Running a fever, chills, just really felt lousy. So we, I took her to the emergency room where they gave her an IV and they gave her a test for the flu. And that test came back positive for influenza A which is the most serious flu. They didn't have a test at that time for COVID-19. But a lot of your comments and a lot of your uh, questions on YouTube and on Facebook have been, did I have COVID-19? And did Ricky have COVID-19? So I did not start seeing symptoms until the Monday after we got back, a couple days after she did. And about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night, I started getting the chills and the fever. Pretty much the same uh, symptoms that she was having. And just a general yucky feeling, pretty much, just like a flu. 
Uh, I did not really have a serious headache, just kind of body aches. And then the next day, we both kind of came down with the worst sore throat we've ever had. I'm telling you, I have never had a sore throat that painful. We couldn't even drink water or tea. It, was, it hurt so bad just to swallow anything. I have never had a sore throat that severe. So that lasted about two and a half days. Now mine sort of developed into, and I did not get tested. She did, but I didn't. I never went to the emergency room. I did take Zafluza, which is a flu or a viral uh, medication for the flu. And I took it the day, I mean the day after I got the symptoms. I don't know if it helped or not. They say it does help, but who knows. I uh, basically was living on Tylenol and Ibuprofen. But we do know that now the time has passed, we do now know that the ship we were on did have some reported cases of COVID-19. That Some people that had been on that cruise or on that ship later found out, like in March or April, they tested positive for COVID-19. So it's possible, I'd say 50-50 chance, that that's what we both had. I have also learned that it is possible that you can test positive for influenza A and COVID-19. So it's rare, but it is possible. So mine sort of developed more into a pneumonia-like symptoms where I didn't get any sleep really for two days. I was up coughing up stuff like you can't even imagine. In fact, I probably should have gone to the emergency room. <clears throat> I never really had a shortness of breath though or had a hard time breathing. And my fever never got over 102 maybe. That might have been the highest it ever got. I do recall uh, getting up one time out of bed with the fever and I almost uh, passed out. Now I probably hadn't eaten very much for a couple of days and we just didn't have any appetite at all and i almost fell down i got up i think to go to the bathroom and i almost fell down i got dizzy so it was there were a couple of scary moments but nothing i never felt like you know i was going to die or anything like that but it was certainly the worst flu i've ever had and those symptoms uh after the really bad stuff and the fever went away probably took a week uh, we were both, both pretty much laid up in bed for a week. And then after that, for another week, uh, I was almost in bed, I'd say for two weeks, off and on for the second week. But symptoms lingered for over a month. Um, some of you, even to this day, you can probably tell my voice has suffered a little bit. Um, I still suffer from a little bit of uh, throat or vocal issues when I'm trying to do these motor vlogs or when I'm trying to do voiceovers on my uh, videos. So even now, and that's been, what, the middle of February. So, but I really didn't start feeling good um, until, I'd say, six weeks. I'd say it hung on for six weeks. And uh, for me, that's a pretty serious flu. So I wouldn't have wished it on anybody. I mean, I'm in pretty decent health, I think, for my age. I don't take a lot of medications. In fact, the only medication I take is Armour Thyroid. I take thyroid medication, and I may end up stopping that. So I've never been a big believer in... Uh, taking uh, prescription drugs but anyway so the question is did I have it I don't know uh, it's possible obviously we could get tested for the antibodies uh, we looked into that and it's about $250 and my insurance doesn't cover that so I don't know that I really want to spend $250 just to know whether or not I had the antibodies um, 
So that's my COVID, possible COVID-19 story. And hopefully if you guys have any stories you want to tell, if any of you have COVID or have, you know, I mean, suffered through that or you have family members, uh, put something in the comments down below. I'd like to know kind of what your experiences have been. But uh, right now we're both feeling good and ready to get back to life as usual. So anyway, that's my motor vlog for today. I've got some interesting videos coming up in the next few days, so make sure you check out Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel. I've got some exciting news and uh, some stuff I haven't told you about yet. So anyway, thanks again for joining me today. I'll see you next time on the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? We've had some good weather. Oh, there you go. You got to get out in the fresh air. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.